Now that we've built up the demand side of the market, let's go ahead and turn our attention to the supply side. And a lot of things that we dealt with on the demand side are gonna be very similar on the supply side as well. So we'll go through this section a little bit more quickly. So what is supply? It's the maximum amount of a product that sellers are willing and able to provide over some period at various prices, holding everything else constant. So on the supply side of the market, who makes up that side? It's going to be all the firms, producers, or sellers of a particular good or service. So once again, the easiest way to differentiate demand and supply is to ask yourself who's doing the buying and who's doing the selling in terms of the particular market. And in the vast majority of cases that we take a look at in this semester, it's going to be the firms and producers on the supply side of of the market. And in terms of us deriving the supply side of, of the, in terms of deriving the supply curve, it's going to be a little bit easier compared to the demand side. So remember, in terms of the demand side, in order to derive the demand curve, we had to order willingness to pay from highest to lowest. On the supply side, firms, corporations, they have their own minimum willingness to sell for a particular good or service, but we can use a little bit more intuition to build up the supply curve. So in terms of the supply curve, we notice that as firms want to produce or bring out more goods into the marketplace, they typically are going to have higher costs. And if they have higher costs, how are they going to sort of sort of uh, back, counterbalance that out? They're going to go ahead and want to charge a higher price. So here, as the costs for a firm go up, they typically are gonna to have to charge a higher price. So as they bring out more goods, more services out into the marketplace or into the economy, they're gonna to have to charge a higher price. So that's why we're gonna see a positive relationship between price and quantity supplied. So just the opposite in terms of the demand curve. Remember on the demand side, we had a negative relationship between price and quantity demanded. Here on the supply side, the higher the price, the more firms and corporations are gonna to want to bring out into the marketplace in terms of quantity. So when we build up or derive the supply curve, we have a very, very sort of similar sort of approach that we took on the demand side. We have a price and quantity combination. And for every price and quantity combination, we can go ahead and uh, plot this on our Cartesian plane. We still have price on the vertical axis, and we still have quantity on the horizontal axis. At a price of $20, firms and corporations are willing to supply 10 units of this good. So you go ahead, plot that point down. At a price of $40, firms and corporations, they're going to go ahead and sell more. They're going to want to supply 20 of these units. And then so on down the line. 60 is 30, 80 is 40, and 100 is 50. Plot those points down. And once you plot everything down, final step, connect the dots. And this upward sloping line that we see right here is denoted as our supply curve. So with this, just like we saw on the demand side, every price and quantity combination can be read off of the supply curve at a price of $80. It's a very high price. Firms and corporations are willing to supply 40 units of this good. So with this, we see a positive relationship between price and quantity supplied. And the special name that we give for that, it's nothing new, nothing surprising. It's going to be called our law of supply. Price and quantity supply are positively re related. As prices rise, providers will want to sell more to maximize profits. And of course, the opposite does hold true. Uh, if prices are going to go down, quantity supply is going to go down as well. So there's just a positive relationship between price and quantity supply. And of course, if we want to go ahead and build up the entire market supply curve, remember, maybe this is just for one particular supplier, one particular producer. What do we have to do in order to build up the entire market for a particular good or service? Just like on the demand side, we need to go ahead and horizontally sum every single individual supplier or firm. So here, remember that every single individual supplier, every individual firm has their own, uh, own individual supply curve. So in order to build up the entire market supply curve, just go ahead and use horizontal summation. For every single price, go ahead and add up the quantity. Go back to the demand side in order to see how this is gonna play out. It's the same exact methodology for every single price, go ahead and add up the quantity. So with this, a lot of the same things that we talked about on the demand side still are going to hold true on the supply side. But what where things are going to be just a little bit different is where we go ahead and take a look at the determinants of supply. So what are a few of the things that are going to shift our supply curve over to the right away from the origin or a few things that are going to shift them to the left towards the origin? These are the things that are going to be different. And we'll go ahead and tackle all of these shifts in the next lecture.